In 1880, there was some uncertainty whether prunes or grapes would be the prominent crop in the Santa Clara Valley. By the turn of the century, prunes clearly won out. They were easier to care for, produced a higher yield, and irrigation made them dependable. But grapes continued to be grown, especially by European immigrants like Benjamin Cribari. He started with a small hillside vineyard near Morgan Hill. His son, Anthony Cribari, remembers how they made their first wine. The way Dad started making his first wine, he cut a 50-gallon barrel in half, so he had two halves, put them close together. Grapes came in a 50-pound lug, so he dumped 50 pounds of grapes in a half a barrel, and he had me put on boots, and he said, now jump on those. So I jumped and danced on those until they were pretty well crushed. He said, now move over here. He had put another 50 pounds of grapes in the other one, and he took these crushed ones and put them in these little fermenting tanks, and we went back and forth until he had enough. That's the way he made the wine the first year in the wine business. <laughs> Winemaking is still important in the Santa Clara Valley, but today more and more of the grapes come from somewhere else. As the houses encroached on the vineyards, the valley changed from a growing region to a center for bottling. The old names are still on the label, Almaden, Misson, Mirasu. The Mirasus are one of the oldest winemaking families in the United States, tracing their history back to great uncle Louis Pellier. Pellier was one of the pioneers of Santa Clara Valley agriculture. He owned a nursery in San Jose, and in 1854, he sent his brother Pierre back to France for nursery stock. Pierre returned with prune cuttings, grapevines, and a wife. His grape and prune cuttings began a planting spree that within a generation turned Santa Clara into a valley of vines and fruit trees.